So, Dylan, I wanted to talk today about types because much is made of the JavaScript type system and much maligned. You know, a, a lot of people think that the type system is not sufficient. They feel like JavaScript's types were, were kind of rushed out the door in that 10 days and that with the benefit of 23-ish years now, we now know that that's not the right way to write code is to put, you know, the dynamic coercion system into effect and allow types to, to convert. So we see tools like Flow and TypeScript, which are trying to lock that down from a tooling perspective, not allowing to do it. And, and what frustrates me about that perspective is it, it, it's like taking any other part of the language and saying, I know that it exists. It'll never change. It'll never go away. I'm just going to pretend as if it doesn't. I'll put my fingers in my ears and say, la, 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 it doesn't exist. <laughs> but in reality, it does exist. And I have seen even the most ardent um, negative naysayers on coercion. For example, Doug Crawford, you know, who says very famously, never, ever use these coercive pieces. And yet, if you go look at his own code, he uses coercion. He uses coercion in his if statements. And things like that. So I feel like we are off track here, and I and I wonder how much of something like TypeScript is an overreaction to the the negative publicity around types, and and instead we could have we could have taken a step back and said, you know what, types are they actually work pretty sensibly if you just take a few moments to learn how the spec talks about coercion. Yeah, and I think that's a, a common misconception around TypeScript, and that. Yes, TypeScript provides a system to say, okay, this variable is of type string, or this variable is a number, or this variable is is always this particular type. But the, the reason they do that isn't that that's the unique selling feature, or that's the thing that's wrong with JavaScript. To me, what's really missing is interfaces, which are sort of another type that are uh, essentially a description of an object or a class and saying it has these methods and these properties available to it and only these methods and properties. And the reason that's so important, I mean, it seems pretty obvious if you've used interfaces in other languages, but the reason that's so important is I want to be able to sw safely swap out a block of code with a replacement. And the only way I can really do that is if I know all the use cases and all the scenarios and all the possibilities of that block of code. And in most languages that are strongly typed, you have interfaces which make it pretty clear that this is essentially the API that's available to me and I want to replicate that API and replace it with this other block of code. So I remember in the early days of Dojo, we tried to support jQuery you know, as, a, as an experiment. And we, we got it right for one very specific version of jQuery. And then basically as soon as we were done, the next version of jQuery came out and completely broke everything we had done. And we realized that was probably not a great idea. So to me, one of the main things that's been a challenge in the JavaScript ecosystem over the years is interoperability. And we've gotten better with things like ES modules and web components and other things that kind of encourage common, consistent interfaces. But what we lack is interfaces for all of our code. And so to me, the benefit of TypeScript is not the simple types, the coercion, which I, I totally understand you know, the pros and cons of it. But by building on top of that and being able to have interfaces and describe interfaces within the language, we actually can have a scenario where, hey, I want to replace this dependency that's kind of stale and crufty. And I want to do that safely without breaking all of the unintended uses of that code. So it sounds like you're using the word type in a bigger sense. I think in the JavaScript land, we kind of think about types as things like string, number, Boolean, maybe object, that sort of thing. You're talking about a bigger sense of types, which is describing complex data and the behaviors that are packaged with them. That's sort of the classical data structures perspective on a type. So you would say something like, my user is a type. Am, am I getting that from you? Well, yeah, I mean, not only data, but also sort of APIs. So if you look, for example, let's say Lodash and the efforts John David Dalton made to try to replace or you know remain API consistent with underscore and the amount of work he had to do to say, okay, 
Lodash supports everything that underscore supports. So if you've been using underscore for years successfully, you can swap Lodash in. It's smaller, it's faster, it's got additional features, but everything you've used before should just work. And if he had been able to say, hey, here's the set of APIs I have to conform to to do that, his job would have been you know, infinitely easier probably to achieve that. So why then is, you know, I, I think the response to that is, well, we have techniques like duck typing um, that's famously actually codified in the language, for example, with promises. We just say, if this thing has a method on it called dot then, then we're just going to assume it's a thenable, it's a promise, we can treat it as a promise. And if it's good enough for them to bake that into the actual spec of the language, and not a long time ago, but relatively recently, they made that decision to do that. If duck typing works for the language, why doesn't it work for users? Why isn't it good enough for those cases? Well, in fact, TypeScript uses duck typing as well. So it really doesn't try to create a whole different type system on top of the language. So it's so when you're saying, you know, is this an instance of this class, for example, in, in sort of more sort of OO style languages, right? it actually will tell you, was that instance created from that class? Whereas in TypeScript, it would just say, does it have the methods and properties that match what you would expect to have as an instance of that class? Not what its origin is or how it, how it got there, but just that it's created in that way. So in many ways, the, the type system in TypeScript very much mirrors what JavaScript does rather than trying to apply a different set of principles to it. So instead, what it's doing, though, is it's adding a grammar that, okay, great, promises are now part of the language. But before promises were part of the language and you wanted to describe a promise like API and describe the interface, how did you do it? Right. So this is really more about the interfaces for programming constructs or methods or properties or objects or whatever you want to do that are not part of the language itself. I mean, they do have type definitions for, hey, this is a promise and it's going to return back some, you know, thing inside of it, which could be defined very explicitly or it could be defined through a generic that says, hey, I don't really care about what type is in here as long as it's wrapped in a promise. You, know, you can do things like that in TypeScript. But instead, this is really more for about, okay, I want to create some new pattern or paradigm that's not part of the language and I want to be able to describe how it behaves.